Right, we've got our part in the vise on the milling machine. We've just used a large V-block behind um, some parallels and then we've just clamped it like that. It's gonna leave a little mark across here, but I'm really not fussed. Now we've got it centered up using our gauge, using our gauge here. And we're as close as we're gonna get it really. Ignore the pliers, I just haven't got a bar to come down. It screws in here, it didn't have one, and I haven't got around to making one yet. So that's just gonna stop this from rotating while I turn it on and show you where we're at. It's only slow speed. So each increment on that is 0 0.01, and we're just hovering. So that's as good as we're gonna get. So there we go for that. Turn this off. Now we've zeroed out uh, X and Y axis. The Z's on zero as well, just because. Now I've done a program. I go to edit, recall. All we do is, this comes under, even though it's a square pocket, rectangular pocket. X1, Y1. X1 is at minus 15. If you're looking at a drawing, you're gonna start in the top left corner. So X1 is minus 15. It's a 30 millimeter um, square. Y1 is at plus 15. And then the opposite corner, X3 is at plus 15, and Y3 is minus 15. We're gonna wrap it down to half a mil above the job and we're gonna to go to a finished depth of minus 2.3. Not gonna worry about radius in the corners because we're gonna let the tool just do that. The direction we're gonna cut in is clockwise. The passes is the depths. How many, how many cuts to get to the final depth and we're gonna do it in 10, just so they're really light. Should be sort of 0.25 cuts each time. Finish cut 0.1, feed rate 250. On the Z feed rate rapid, the feed rate on the X and Y axis is 100. Finish feed rate of 50. And then using tool number one. Now tool number one, I'll load it up afterwards, is this little tiny end mill. So it's real nice and short, so it'll be nice and rigid. So that's gonna go in in a moment. And then at the bottom of this, we've got auxiliary beginning one, coolant on, on auxiliary end one, coolant off. So if I press mode, program, and then look, that's what it's doing. Now, even though it only shows you the outline of the square, it actually removes all the material in the middle as well, according to the books. I've not used this for one of these before, so if we do it slowly, one pass, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it should be back. Oh, no, one out of ten. There you go. So that's it done. So as we're on centre, we'll take our, uh, we'll take the indicator out. Now, it's going to do a lot of cutting in this middle area where there is nothing, but I could program it to skip that, but there's no point. While I'm doing something else, I'll just let this carry on. So if we just jog out of here, I'll have to just pop the camera down a second. We'll put our small end mill in. Now what we've got, uh, what we've got to do, sorry, we've got to touch off on the job. So we'll come out of jog mode. We're going to set up tool data and we've got to tell it what size tool we're using. And I forgot to measure what this is. That looks like it's a three mil, three mil end mil. So we do 3.0. Now it says move to reference point, then press set. Now what that means is I need to move this tool down. I'm just gonna extend the quill a little bit and then I'll lock that there, move the handle out of the way. So what I've got to do now is I've got to jog down and touch off on the tool onto the workpiece. 
if I come down with the rapid and then I'll just move forward a bit and then I'll get same as what most people use just use a small piece of paper just use a small piece of paper there slow the job rate down a bit too slow but I don't want to crash the tool into the face of the job There we go, that's gripped on that paper. So now I'm gonna set my Z. We'll come out of that, we'll set Z, zero. Sorry about the glare, I can't really do a lot about that. So now we go back into setup, tool data, three mil. We're on the base of the job now. So now what we've got to do is you do set up your reference positions, your Z retract. So I'll go back into DRO, back into jog on the Z, and we're gonna come up to how far out the way I wanna go. And I'd say about there, which is 247 mil above the job. So I'll come out of that, set up reference positions, and it will say Z retract, Z retract, not set. But if I press there, we're set. Home on zero, Y, X on home zero, Y home zero, and now that is done. Now I can go back to DRO, return to absolute. There you go, because I'm in my retract, so it won't go back to zero on the Z. Let's move my bit of paper. Now feeds and speeds, I need to just have a look here because not very good. There's some data for the um, tool eye, where I've got the sizes from, which is off the manufacturer's website. Now I've got this little calculator on screen from the little machine shop for speeds and feeds. So if I go into millimetres, we're doing million, aluminium, we're using a carbide end mill. The end mill diameter is three. The machine max RPM is 3000, and it is a three flute end mill. And then I'll calculate from that. And it says my feed rate should be 216 millimeters a minute, and I should run it at the full 3000 RPM. So let's go back over here. We're currently in back gear from doing the uh, indicating. So we're back forward now. We'll wind our speed right up. So at 3000 RPM. Now I'll go back into the program. Edit, recall, one. Data forward. Now, set the feed rate to be 216. I'm just going to play it safe and go a little bit slower. I'll go to 150. And then I'll do the finished feed rate. I'll up that a bit, just go 75. Right. Let's move some of this. See what sort of mess this makes with the coolant because I made a little guard to go along here but not for when the vice is there because it sits in this channel so I'll just put the side ones up that I've got angle them 
that one's not going to want to stay. I'll tell you what, I'll get just for some weight, and then that'll do. Right. So start, press go, load three mil down at all, and then hit go. Now play it safe. Be prepared to stop the machine if I need to. See now it's just doing the inside pocket. Because there's obviously no material there, it's just going to start cutting in a second. Fairly touching the job at the moment. I'll try and get this coolant a bit better as well. in the workplace. Actually making a cut. We've done our main pass and we was checking this um, using a gauge block which I've left on the side over here because the flange on this tool is 30 millimeters wide so I want it to be a nice fit so we've got 30 millimeter gauge block there and that's a nice fit in there, but we are ever so slightly out. Mm, it's just a little tighter than I'd want there. Um, so I'm gonna take a tiny bit off of that. So I'm gonna go into the program, gonna edit it. You probably won't see on the camera there. And then we'll run it again. And basically we've just adjusted for that tight fit on the Y-axis. It's gonna be a very minimal cut when it does get round to it, so. We'll let that run. While that's running, and we check that in a minute. I'll show you this, what we've got, mate. We've got in here some EN24T, and we've got that faced off um, center drill, and we've got the steady in the end of it. So, or the live center, shall I say. And what I've got to make is this. Now, this is a spindle adapter or draw tube adapter so this quick turn at the minute it's got a hydraulic chuck on there and you've got a draw tube which runs all the way along the back into here and obviously as and when it's actuated it pulls into closer jaws and releases now I do a lot of work with bars so I wanted a collet chuck so I purchased with that saw I purchased this Crawford CDC 54 
collet chuck. Went to put it on the lathe, and this has a male thread in there. Let me open up and show you. Just diverting off of the current project for a minute while that's cutting. Watching it cut fresh air. This inner sleeve, obviously your colic's sitting there. This goes over the top. But this inner sleeve, if I can manage to pull it out. Camera down a second. There we go. This sleeve here has got a male thread on it. Now the draw tube is also a male thread. So we need to make an adapter, which is, this is M76 by 1.5, and the draw tube is M60 by two. So we need to make a female, female adapter so that we can put that on the lathe. Now I thought for a minute, I'd ordered, bought the wrong one or had a cack handed draw tube, but that's not the case seems to be that that's how it is and uh, yeah they all need an adapter sometimes if you're lucky you'll have the same thread but this draw tube was probably bought with this chuck set up and this chuck is a bit of an oddball it's not your your standard company one um, I can't even remember the name now Chinese company but this one is Wachion however that's pronounced if that's correct and normally they're one called Kitagawa, or something along them lines anyway. So that project's coming up and I'll show you soon. So let's see if this is done. See if this fits now. Does a nice job. Someone showed me this trick. Get your airline, if you don't want to splash everything everywhere, just get a cheap airline, these are three quid, and just squash the ends. Just squash them till you're happy, and then you haven't got to worry about blowing chips or swarf or coolant back up in your face. So I have that one squashed down for use on the machines and then a full blown open airline for everything else. Right, so let's now see. Now that's better. That's just got the tiniest amount of room in there and the same on that side. So we are good. And we don't have to worry about what the radius is in these corners other than them being nice because when they make these tools they actually cut across on the corners so that you don't have that issue specifically. So now that's done, what we've got to do in this section here, I'll now do a new program to drill four holes and then tap all four holes to suit this here. Put that back on the side and I've actually got the information for these holes it's from the stakes on their website and it's in Imperial, but we can change that. So you can see just here, we've got it at, between centers is 0.905, 905 thousandths between centers. So we'll see what that is and we'll uh, do ourselves a four bolt pattern for that and get them drilled and tapped. I'll show you when it's underway. Right, we've got our Say bolt circle, but our bolt layout done on here. I'll show you the program. There it is. We're going to look. So we've set your start angle. Angle of bolt circles, the first hole is always at three o'clock. So we've come 45 degrees up and then we've give it our diameter for the bolt circle and the number of holes. Again, sorry for the dark screen, but you can see that there. And now if I Try and do that. Can't see it very well anyway. If I show you the program. So we're doing a drill event, four holes, X and Y center is zero, Z rapid to one mil above the job, Z end is a 12 mil hole, radius of 1627, the angle start hole 45 degrees, eight pecs on each hole, 250 on the Z feed rate, tool one, 
and then coolant on, coolant off. And I just actually want to, um, no, we'll try 250 on that. So there we are. There's our drill in there. So let's run the program. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't snap the drill or anything like that. Coolant's a bit slow to react there, but it's drilling the holes. If I started it, say five mil above the job, the coolant would have had more time to come on, and it wouldn't have entered that first one dry. Done. Let's have a little look. There's our four holes. So we can take our drill out now and we'll get ready to do the tapping. Um, I've got a tapping attachment, but I don't know how I'm going to do this because it is a bit big. It's a bit of a beast, but this one is adapted, so it's quick change, but it's got collets. Um, and it's a blind hole. I might play it safe and just tap these by hand because they're so small, I don't want to break them. So I'll put a spring-loaded center in this um, chuck. I'll line the tap up and I'll do them by hand. So what I've done is I've jumped the program to a position Stopped it and then moved the quill, hence why it's got a warning that the quill's moved. It doesn't like that, but that gets me over hole one. Then I'll do the same for two, three, and four, and then I'll just use this with the spring loaded center there just to tap them, play it safe, as I said, because I don't want to snap the tap. I'll bring you back when they're all done. Right, let me show you this part completed. Now, battery went flat, so I had to put this on charge and I need to get it done, so I skipped a bit. I've got to stop doing this because I do end up missing a lot the bits for getting the camera and stuff like that. I like my uh, cardboard screen here because these old CRTs are not the easiest things to see. So what we're on here, we're on the, let's go back to the main menu. This is a T32B controller. I'm trying to see where I can get the light out of it best. Maybe up like that. So we've got position, setup, program, program file, tool data. So if we turn on tool data, we've got measuring unit off, measuring unit on, and tool set measure. Now currently, the unit is off and it's tucked away. Let's give it a go. Measuring unit on. Now here's the new Touchmaster. This is a direct replacement for the OEM one. Let me show you the OEM. Now my OEM one, is a Metro Limited. The only difference being is this has got the face across the front, which in the instructions tells you to put a dial indicator on to make sure you've got this square for the best accuracy. But if you can probably see there, this has had a few clouts and it isn't square anymore anyway. So that's kind of irrelevant. Would have been nice if they put something like that on this as well. Would have been pretty good, but they don't do it like that. So that's fair enough. So we've got that in. We put our four air holes in even though I haven't got an airline hooked up to this but the design is that when you retract it I think from the sleeve so as it comes out of there it activates this to be continuous I believe um, to just blow air up and blow any swarf or chips or any other debris off the end of the sensors so these sensors only have two wires on them I think the newer ones possibly have three the third one was power for an LED in the middle there you'll see this one did have an led it didn't work anyway with the whole sensor didn't work on this one and i had a look and i think the board was fried as i said before 
So there it is. And we've verified that it works. If we press tool set measure, it shows we're on tool three. Now, some of these machines are different. If I turn tool set measure off and go into manual mode, if I press both them at once, it moves at the biggest increments. Now, if I come down, when I want to actually do the touching off of the tool, I have to press tool set measure. Otherwise, it doesn't work to highlight the tool. So on the Z now, we're currently, if you can see that, minus 350.931. Now, once I press tool set measure, this hand wheel, rapid, doesn't work anymore. Only the jog buttons. And it goes at a set speed. You can change that speed in the parameters. So, 350.391. I have to touch this at the same time as pressing the jog. That stopped, still got my finger on it, but it stops the machine. Now if we go up here, we're on 197384. That's working brilliant. That's what I wanted. I know you can get away without it, but I wanted to make sure the machine's got the option. So let's replace the sensor and get it done. and that changes on there, 318. So, tool set measure, we finish with that. We're gonna turn it off. And there it goes. Goes back home, job done. So that is the base piece successfully made for that. And that saves me um, having to wait a week or two, probably a week and a bit maybe, to get the round flange, because that's where the error was. It's the factory one, standard fit on this year machine. It's a round flange, and the other one, I'll just open it up again. The reason we had to make this piece is because of this square flange. So for future reference, for any of you guys that might be in the same issue, or you can find a replacement, but it's not necessarily what you've got already, the only difference between some of these aftermarket ones and the newer and later versions is the fact that they may have power for the LED, um, and they may also have very slight variations on the thickness of this flange, but all I done was compensated for that in there. As long as you're within the range of this part here, of this tip, then it doesn't matter if you're off center a little bit, the tool will still be on center, and as long as you're touching that, you're gonna get your reading. So yeah, there we go. Little video for a Saturday afternoon, or should I say Saturday morning till Saturday afternoon. So yeah, thanks for watching.